There's an old parable from India, the blind men and the elephant. A man brings an elephant to a small village and a group of blind men there who have never encountered an elephant before go to learn about the elephant. Each blind man touches a different part of the elephant and later on they discuss it with each other. One blind man who felt the elephant's leg said, an elephant is like a pillar. Another blind man who felt the elephant's side disagreed and said, no, no, an elephant is like a wall. And a third blind man who felt the tail said, no, you're both wrong. An elephant is like a broom. And another felt the trunk and said, no, 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 an elephant is like a rope, and so on. Now, while all of their descriptions of the elephant were true, none of the blind men succeeded to describe the entire elephant. As musicians, we are the blind men in the story. Music is the elephant, and music theory is our attempts to describe the elephant. So music itself is abstract and untouchable. It's just in the air for a split second and then it lives in our minds. So music is an experience and describing it and talking about it only go so far. So why do we bother trying to explain music? Shouldn't we just shut up and play? First, what is music theory? The word theory comes from the Greek theoria meaning to contemplate or speculate or view. The word theater has a close origin. The term theory is used by people in a number of ways, and I can't tell you how many emails I've gotten over the years on this topic. In hard sciences, a theory is a proven idea. But others use the word theory as a speculation of what might be true. And another definition of theory is it's a body of knowledge. For us, that's what music theory is. It means our body of musical knowledge. It's a blanket term for many musical topics. So some topics are concrete facts like naming pitches, scales, and rhythms. Other topics are subjective like one should never use parallel fifths or this is the way you play this instrument. Music theory is an observation of music. It's all made up. It's been made up and agreed upon by different groups of people and it gets updated over time. And different cultures have different theories on music. There's not one way to view it. So music theory is not a hard truth as it is in science. It's a moving, evolving body of knowledge. But if music theory is all made up, why bother to learn it? Can't you just play random notes until you stumble onto something that you like? Well, of course you can, but with even a little bit of theory, you can do the same thing much more effectively. Think about this, many thousands of musicians before you have studied, practiced, and played music for millions of hours. So music theory, our body of knowledge, is a collection of that experience. And even if it's imperfect and incomplete, it's still a great launching point. Sure, you could work out many already known things on your own and feel proud that you did, but you'll be wasting precious time. It's important for you to realize that your time to learn to play music is limited. It's finite. So instead of wasting time reinventing the wheel, you could learn what is already known and then you can take it further or question it or break the rules. So the old saying is, if I have seen further, it is by standing on the shoulders of giants. The next reason to learn music theory is understanding it helps you learn faster. So learning music is an incredible exercise in memory and many people make the mistake of learning a song as just a long series of notes one after another. First I play this note, then I follow it with this one, and so on. Now, that's like learning a speech phonetically, just speaking one syllable at a time, but not knowing what the words mean. Instead, if you learn the speech in larger, more meaningful pieces, words, phrases, ideas, you'd learn it much faster and express it better. So similarly, when you understand larger, more meaningful musical structures, you're going to learn music much more quickly. So instead of remembering three bits of information like C, E, and G, you can remember it as a larger structure called a C major triad. And then that larger structure later becomes a piece of an even larger musical structure. And so it just keeps on snowballing. The more of these musical structures you learn, the simpler learning each new song gets. 
So I've taught thousands of students face to face and the ones who avoid the theory parts, they plateau and they tread water and it takes them the same amount of time to learn each new song. The ones who work on the theory part, they start to put things together more and more quickly and they advance much more rapidly. So theory helps you organize what you hear and it helps you hear things you didn't know were there or that you didn't know you should be listening for. Another reason to know theory is it makes it easier to communicate with other musicians. So it's important to be able to talk about music because you need to understand what other musicians want from you or how to tell other musicians what you want from them. The more theory you know, the more accurate you can be when you communicate with other musicians. So how do musicians use music theory? In the beginning, music theory gives you focus. It helps you know what there is to learn. But new musicians are then wondering, do musicians really think about all of this stuff when they play? No, they don't. Just like you don't think about the spelling of words or grammar as you speak. But if you need to stop and think about it, you can. So in the same way, music theory won't be constantly running through your head as you play. With practice, you'll create and express music just like speaking. And afterwards, you can look back on it and understand why it works or be able to explain it to a fellow musician. And if it doesn't work, theory might help you understand why. When you're creating, sometimes you create something great, but then you get stuck in one place. Sometimes theory can give you some ideas or solutions of where to go or how to get there. It's just one more tool for musicians to use. One of the sillier things I hear people say is they're worried that learning theory will make them less creative. Look, you're a creative being. Nothing can destroy your creative abilities. Wouldn't it be frightening if someone had the power to make you less creative just by teaching you something? Hey, Jocko, did you know that was a B13 chord? Aw, oh, man, I'll never play again. If your creativity is that fragile, something else is wrong. You can't possibly think that all of the world's musicians who knew theory lacked creativity. So don't fear learning theory. If anything, theory allows you to be more creative. So instead of wasting time figuring out all of the things millions of people before you have, you can learn those parts quickly, and then you have more time to find what lies beyond it. You will read about or hear about brilliant musicians who say they don't know any theory. And it's true, there are lots of examples of people who just pick up an instrument and start playing. But here's the thing, they do know the theory. They know it on an intuitive level. They might not know the names for everything, but they know how music works. And we all have this intuition in different amounts for each element of music. Who knows though, you might be one of those that's just off the charts in every aspect, but most people aren't. And Many of those people that are off the charts with their musical intuition, they still learn the theory. To wrap it up, the most important thing to remember about music theory is this. Music created the theory, not the other way around. First, there was music, and then people worked to describe it. So musicians played something which sounded good, and then they gave it a name, and then they organized it. Those names, that organization, the music theory, gives you this giant head start and you're lucky to have it. So it's also essential to remember that theory is not music itself. It's hard to make good music with theory alone. I don't recommend it. Theory is just a tool. Ultimately, music has to come from the human spirit, but this tool will organize music in your mind and ears and it will give your human spirit more chances to express itself. Theory will accelerate your learning, and it will help you communicate with other musicians. Theory will help you get to know the elephant. 